cannot even begin to tell you how thrilled I am to be here. Although I stand here today as the chief technology officer of a $40 billion technology company, my journey really began when I came to the United States from Shabad, a small city in India, to further my education in engineering. Four states, and a few years later, I finally made Michigan and the automotive industry my home. It is humbling to be standing here in the heart of Detroit, the motor city of the world, as an example of how mobility is freedom in motion. The desire to move, grow, and be free is in our DNA. And an automobile is not just a representation of mobility, it is a technology platform. And here's the thing about technology. We hardly ever achieve everything we set out to do, yet most often we achieve a lot more than we intended. Let me give you an example. A few months ago, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of an important milestone in human history, putting a man on the moon. And it is fascinating to look at predictions at that time. Space travel, colonizing planets, mining on the moon, didn't exactly happen as predicted, did it? But space technology continued to inspire generations of scientists and engineers, led to some profound discoveries and inventions in aerospace, telecommunication, robotics, electronics, and some not so obvious ones. Memory foam, freeze drying, and prosthetics, just to name a few. Sounds a lot like the automotive industry, which has had a major impact socially and economically over the last century. But at the most fundamental level, it enabled movement. Over the years, it has promoted technological innovation, societal transformation, and personal freedom. Today, it is one of the world's most high-tech, complex, highly regulated safety products produced in volume. Over 80 million produced just this year alone. Think about this. An average car weighs over 2,800 pounds, has over 30,000 parts, 100 sensors, over 100 million lines of code, copper wiring stretching over a mile long. And yet, it has to be safe and reliable enough for a 16-year-old to operate. And by the way, my son just turned 16 and got his license last weekend, and he's out on the roads right now. <laughs> yes, automobile has changed our lives and enabled freedom, but it also created a few challenges. Accidents, urban congestion, environmental concerns, and so on. Now, just let's step back and see if we have been asking the right questions. And what I mean is this. As an example in our industry, we have asked the question, how do we prevent and protect people or occupants in a car during accident? The underlying assumption in this question, accidents are inevitable. The result, stronger cars, seat belts, and airbags. I want to pause and want all of us to think and see what if the question was different. How do we prevent accidents? I strongly believe the outcome of the result is entirely dependent on the question you ask. Yes, we have challenges, and we are addressing them. For instance, new mobility concepts are focused on addressing congestion in cities and helping better utilization of cars. Cleaner powertrain systems are mitigating environmental concerns. ADAS and autonomy are focused on safety. So today, I want to focus the conversation beyond the foreseeable and ask bigger questions. Not whether we'll have steering wheels and brake paddles 10 years from now, but rather, how will a new mindset on mobility give all of us more freedom? Imagine a car in the future that will consume and not produce carbon dioxide. Imagine an infrastructure that can predict 
optimize and rebalance traffic flow in cities. For all of us driving on the I-75, that means no traffic jams. Imagine public-private partnerships working and defining boundary conditions like autonomous lanes, highways, bridges, and overpasses that take away the limitations of two-dimensional traffic flow. There is no doubt we are at a critical inflection point in world history. Thomas Frey recently said, humanity will change more in the next 20 years than in all of human history. So let's look forward 10 to 12 years. And it's just two product cycles after all in the automotive industry. And ask the question, how do we create technology for society that it doesn't even know it needs yet? 12 years ago, none of us knew we needed a smartphone. And for all the techies in the audience, please allow me to geek out and speak engineer for a moment. This is a system optimization problem. The interdependency of the domains is more relevant today than ever before. The boundary conditions are timelines and commercial viability. The objective function is to close the multi-domain gaps and minimize the total operating costs. This actually would apply to most current issues, autonomy, electrification, connectivity, and mobility as a service. Simply put, what I'm trying to say is the problems are complex and the solutions are extremely interdependent. Autonomy, one of the promising technologies of today, is a great example. It will not only address connectivity, comfort, convenience, and safety in a car, but will also impact the infrastructure of the cities, roads, and traffic, and will radically shift the paradigm of car ownership and utilization. So today is less about better answers to the questions we've been asking for the last 100 years, and is more about identifying better questions. It is not about whether autonomy will come and by when. It is more about how mobility of the future will expand the freedom of movement. So let me leave you with these final thoughts. Think about the limitations you have on your travel today, and what if they were gone? No need to stop for food, no need to stop for gas, no need to stop for rest on a long drive. A car that can be electric when you want, customizable based on your need, offers a seamless transition from your living room and office, and can be owned or shared when and if you want it. These are the questions and challenges we are addressing today. Looking at limitations today and figuring what happens when they're gone. Remember, technology doesn't always fully achieve what it's set out to do, but often offers a lot more than was initially imagined. So let us all ask the right questions now and bring the future we all want for ourselves and for the next generation. It is not just about moving faster and safer. We are doing that today. It is about working to offer experiences beyond driving, enabling to change how society interacts. Mobility should not consume our time. Mobility should provide us the freedom of choice to use time. Thank you.